This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, Juan, it's great to have you back after your trip to Dallas. But can you explain what happened to you in the airport on Sunday or on Monday when no. you tried to return home? Right. This, well, this was actually Sunday. Uh, on Sunday uh, afternoon, my wife and I were returning from a conference uh, in Dallas, and uh, we were boarding a flight to New York airport, uh, when the flight had to, uh, after being on the tarmac for an hour and a half, had to come back uh, to the uh, to the gate. Uh, there were a lot of thunderstorms, but then the entire power, apparently, in the traffic control system at uh, DFW airport went down. So all flights for several hours that were coming out of the airport uh, had uh, had to be brought back to the gate. So there was pandemonium in general at DFW airport. But uh, right on our flight, uh, we we noticed that there were several other uh, passengers who appeared to be Central Americans, uh, obviously couldn't speak English, didn't know what was going on. And so we sort of tried to help them try to figure out where to go to rebook to try to rebook their flights. It turns out they were all Central American refugees who had just been released from uh, from detention centers and were being basically shipped uh, by the federal government to uh, relatives somewhere in other parts of the United States. There was a, a young Salvadoran woman with a four-year-old and a two-year-old son, uh, two-year-old sons. Uh, there was a Honduran man with a teenage son. There was a, a Guatemalan woman with a young uh, uh, with her young son. Uh, and and in the case of the Guatemalans, they barely not only didn't they speak English, they didn't even uh, speak much Spanish. They were all talking basically in indigenous languages to each other. Uh, and so we tried to help them out, but they were totally lost, bewildered. They had no money. They didn't know. Uh, most of them looked like they'd never been in an, air, uh, in an airplane before, and and so they didn't even know how to figure out uh, how to, who to talk to or what to do. Uh, so we spent several hours trying to help them, but then we discovered that there were uh, the American Airlines people were of no help whatsoever in terms of trying to, to assist these people because the lines were so long. But we discovered that there were several employees of not of the airlines. But but who worked in the airports. Contractors. Uh, no, these were individual employees, uh, maintenance people and others, who have been now for months trying to assist these stranded Central American refugees, uh, providing, trying to provide them food, uh, blankets, uh, whatever they could. Uh, they were doing it all on their own time and uh, putting money out of their own pocket to try to assist these folks. The airlines wanted to ship them to Minneapolis or to Miami or to Greensboro, stay overnight in those areas uh, to uh, to get new flights to go wherever they were uh, trying to head to. And as the employees started to telling me this, they said that this is happening every single day, and especially in the hub airports like Denver and Dallas and Chicago, when storms, these summer storms come and there are outages and, and plane cancellations, these uh, migrants are completely lost, and no one is assisting them, no one is helping them. So on top of the problems they have coming up through the border into the United States, then uh, dealing with detention, once they are released, they are now confronting this total chaos uh, in the system, because the government is just sending them on their way with no money and no help, particularly the young woman with two, a two-year-old and a four-year-old, no stroller, uh, uh, the, all, their, all their possessions basically in knapsacks and bags, uh, and uh, to deal with two children and have come from Central America and now, even in the United States, having no help is just astonishing. And, and of course, the average air traveler or tourist is just going back and forth, doesn't even notice what's going on right in front of our very eyes. This is happening in airports across the country today and has been happening for months. And I just think, for, and if anyone who speaks Spanish, who's in one of these airports and sees someone who's completely lost, uh, any help you can give them, I think, would be appreciated. And this is just a reminder, we were there a year ago in Texas, and each airport we were in, including Dallas, we saw a number of children holding those telltale plastic bags. When we would approach, uh, when there was an adult, they would come over and say, get away from these children. Um, they would say, we could not talk to them. But the sign is those plastic bags right. for the kids. It's, it's just astonishing that this is happening in the United States in 2019. Well, we're yeah. going to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Clara Long of Human Rights Watch, who was just at the Clint Detention Center, if you want to call it a jail for children.
children, where children are taking care of children. Um, she'll describe the filthy conditions there. The news was yesterday, 300 kids taken away, and now the news is 100 are being brought back in. Stay with us.